Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 12th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide you guys with another update on Hurricane Florence. And the key points of this most recent update are that the size of the wind field has increased, even though according to the National Hurricane, the peak winds have dropped a little bit bringing it down to strong category three status as opposed to the lower end of category four, which it had maintained for, for about 24 hours. Now, just looking at this GOES 16 channel 13, there's quite a bit of, of convection surrounding the eye of Florence, which does appear to be contracting a bit but the convection remains very deep with, with very cold cloud tops circulating around the center of Florence. It's worth noting that the outer bands of Florence appear to be expanding a bit in association with that expanded wind field and stretching well off to, to the north and west in the direction of the hurricane's path and in between Florence and an expected landfall on the U.S. East Coast likely early Friday. I'm going to show you a couple of other satellite shots. This one, a visible shot, satellite shot. And we, we begin to see the outflow, the furthest fringe of the outflow of the storm starting to encounter the outer banks of North Carolina early this afternoon. And we on, on radar, we have some indication of, of some light rain showers associated, associated with the extreme outer circulation of Florence drifting into the coast. It's worth noting that these are not the, the anywhere near the, the stronger storms that are associated with the main circulation of Florence, that those storms will probably start to encounter the coast by early tomorrow sometime. So we're about 12 to 18 hours out from first strong storm impacts tomorrow morning. And here's another satellite shot, this one. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. This one, the infrared satellite shot from the National Hurricane Center for, for, for the US East Coast, showing Florence churning off toward the west northwest, heading at present directly toward the North Carolina coast. And as we can see in some of the final frames, the cloud tops tend to, to brighten up, get, get a bit more red in here. And this, this may be an indication that the eye wall is, is reforming a bit, uh, getting, getting a little bit more elevation here. So the National Hurricane Center notes that fluctuations in intensity are expected over the next 24 hours or so. But as the storm gets close to landfall, it's, it's expected to weaken as it encounters a bit more wind shear and generates a bit more upwelling as the storm's forward motion is expected to slow down. But the slowing forward rate of speed, expected slower, slower forward rate of speed will tend to generate multiple high tides in which hurricane force winds or tropical storm force winds are encountering the coast. So that, that could be an added impact as well as a more persistent storm tends to generate heavier rainfall. And now the National Hurricane Center is noting that as much as 40 inches of rain could fall in some locations. The projected path of Florence has shifted a bit to the south again, uh, running a bit to the south of, of Wilmington looks like, or very close to Wilmington and then the Wrightsville Beach area in extreme Southern North Carolina. The storm is expected to retrograde a bit along the North Carolina and South Carolina coasts, which is um, a recipe for very prolonged impact and, and an onshore, strong onshore flow to the north of the storm, which could generate very severe storm surge flooding. National Hurricane Center is, is noting that the storm surges could be between 9 and 13 feet in locations near where the center of the storm approaches or makes landfall. But it's worth noting now that tropical storm force winds extend out up to 175 miles from the center of the storm with 
with hurricane force winds extending out up to 75 miles. So the impact, the potential impact size of the storm is, is broadening. So storm surges, high storm surges could propagate well to the north of the storm center. So something to keep in mind as this storm approaches the coast. Now I did mention that the extreme outer outflow of Florence is, is starting to encounter the outer banks and we do have some indication of this on radar as some very light showers and thunderstorms run in near Cape Hatteras and circulate in toward the Moorhead City region. Over, over the coming hours we will tend to expect this radar light up quite a bit more as Florence approaches the coast. I'd just like to make a final word that the, the, the stor this storm, despite the fact that it is weakened slightly, is still a very, very dangerous storm. It's a large storm, it's, it's motion toward the coast, and its predicted potential to slow down will bring prolonged impacts of, of a major hurricane along the North Carolina and, and South Carolina coasts over the next 24 to 48 hours. So a very dangerous situation, a very dangerous track, a strong storm that could re-intensify a bit over the next 24 hours and that is expected to impact the coast as a major hurricane as it tracks over very warm ocean waters in the range of 29 degrees Celsius. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.